Hey guys, welcome to Jaywalk Media. This is Matt Miller. Watch what happens when Senator John Kennedy accuses the executive director of the Arab American Association of supporting Hamas. All hell breaks loose in the middle of Congress, and I think her reaction to this kind of reveals uh, what she truly does support. Check it out right here. You are the executive director of the Arab American Institute. Is that correct? Correct, sir. Okay. And according to your website, you're also, I'm going to quote here, a longtime Democratic Party activist who served as a member of the 2016 Democratic National Convention's Platform Standing Committee. Close quote. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. You support Hamas, do you not? I, Senator, oddly enough, I'm going to say thank you for that question because it demonstrates the purpose of our hearing today in a very let's, effective way. Let's start first way. with a yes or no. Hamas is a foreign terrorist organization that I do not support, but you asking the executive director of the Arab American Institute that question very much puts the focus on the issue of okay. hate in our country. Well, well I, got, I got your answer and I appreciate it. What is the... Uh, you, you support Hezbollah, too, don't you? <laughs> Again, I, I find this line of questioning extraordinarily disappointing, Is that Senator. A no? That you yes. have you have Arab American constituents that you represent but, but in your a, great yeah, state. Yes, ma'am, I understand that. But is my time's limited, and I apologize. But is that a yes or a no? A yes or no question to do I support Hezbollah? The answer is I don't support violence, whether it's Hezbollah, Hamas, or any other entity you, that invokes it. You can't it. So bring no, yourself sir. to say no, can you? No, I can say no. I can say yes. But what you I haven't. can say is you just your can't line make of questioning. Do, do, do you Senator. support or oppose Iran <laughs> and their hatred of Jews? Again, I'm going to emphasize Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, none of them is going to, you, this you discussion. You can't bring yourself to say no, can Sir, you? I don't support. It's real simple. Excuse me, I'm going to, if I may, none, as none, a Muslim no. woman, as a Muslim woman, sir, I'm going to tell you I do I, not support Iran. But what I will tell you, you is that uh, this conversation. I, I'm running out of time. I'm okay. sorry. Um, you, uh, you called our decision Please. to cut funding. You called our decision to cut fund. Well, first, what's the United Nations Relief and Works Agency? It's uh, UNRWA, which is yeah. the institution that exists to provide uh, services and aid to the nearly 6 million Palestinian refugees. And, and you called our, our decision to cut funding for them, quote, an incredible moral failure, close quote. That is absolutely correct. But again, I would suggest that conversation and is about did, foreign we policy. we did that because... Nine UNRWA staff members were fired for, for actually helping Hamas on October 7th. Isn't that the case? I, I don't believe that that's correct in terms of... Let me ask you please. one more time. You support Hamas, don't you? <laughs> you Sir. support UNRWA and Hamas, don't you? Sir. Please. I... I think it's exceptionally disappointing that you're looking at an Arab American witness before you and saying you support Hamas. You know what's disappointing to me? I do not you support can't Hamas. Bring yourself I do to not say support Hamas. You don't or support any... UNRWA. You don't support Hamas. You don't I was very clear in my support for Hezbollah, UNRWA. And you don't I support oppose... Iran. You should hide your head in a bag. Your time has expired. Uh, please. So I think this lady's response said it all and kind of proved that Senator Kennedy was onto something here. Uh, actions speak louder than words, and this lady's track record exposes what she really does support, in my opinion. Um, and Kennedy, I think, demonstrated that very well here, very clearly. And I would have to say that I see this a lot on the left, where there's this not necessarily an open support for. I mean, sometimes there is an open support for Hamas by young radical lefties on college campuses, for instance, when they were taking over Columbia. I was there. Uh, we saw people wearing the, the scarf that represents support for Hamas. And uh, they were chanting things that were extremely anti-Israel. Um, but I would say if you're not in that camp, a lot of people just have this passive permissiveness towards what Hamas is doing. And, you know, the, the attitude is sort of like, well, Israel's really the bad guy, so it's okay, whatever they have to do to defend themselves. 
which is, it involves killing civilians, shooting rockets indiscriminately into Israel, and not just attacking the IDF, but also attacking Israeli civilians, women, and children. Hey guys, I want to give a quick shout out to our amazing sponsor, Bonner Private Wines Partnership. Do you guys like drinking wine with dinner, but get tired of the overly sugary, mass-produced stuff that you find at the grocery store? Well, let me tell you about something different. Wines from extreme altitudes not only taste better, but are actually better for you. These wines come from up to 9,000 feet in the Andes Mountains of Argentina and are packed with poly phenols and antioxidants, compounds that are known to be good for your heart health and your overall health. What does that mean for you? Wines that are rich in flavor and pure without being full of chemicals and dyes that you'd find in generic wines. Imagine tasting smoky, bold tasting wine in a bottle that is crafted in one of the most remote places in the world. The Bonner Private Wines Partnership makes it easy to get these rare wines. Right now you can save $25 on your first order and get complimentary shipping. Just visit bonnerprivatewines.com slash jaywalk to get started. This is a healthier, tastier wine experience you won't want to miss out on. Now let's get back to the video. I don't know how you could have this passive, permissive, passive support for Hamas in any way on the left. Uh, if you are somebody who is professing to be pro-peace and pro-tolerance, and uh, you know, trying to have the moral high ground in any way. You can't support Hamas because they are not peaceful and they're not, a, they're not against or above attacking civilians. You know, it really is disgraceful what happened at so many American universities uh, a few months ago when they were rioting and taking over their campuses. I saw it at Columbia University. It happened across the country. And what I saw specifically was faculty members and professors helping and working alongside the students. And I wouldn't be surprised if they were actually the facilitators behind this. And this was a more coordinated approach to protesting rather than a spontaneous um, breakout. And these faculty members who are 50, 60, 70 years old, they've been in the game for a long time. And we know that college professors tend to be um, an overwhelming amount of them are activists. They're far left radical activists that are in this profession to indoctrinate young people to join this radical left critical theory, uh, Frankfurt School view of the world. Really, it's, it's neo-Marxism. It's a version of Marxism that is more applicable to today's uh, modern politics than Karl Marx's version is. And Anyway, not to get on a tangent, but the professors are working with the students to create these protests and to create this loud anti-Israel, pro-Hamas, pro-Palestine voice. And it's very sketchy because they're not um, painted to be like this on the surface. They're actually trying to market these things as grassroots student movements, grassroots um, organic protest. But very seldom is that the case. I mean, college students, they don't have the organizational skills to get the class on time. So, I mean, how do you think that they would have the organizational skills to put these huge demonstrations together with all these tents, signs, flags, the uniform of, you know, the, the scarf that they wear, uh, everything. Everyone's supplied with everything they need. The other thing I would say is when I was there at Columbia and I wanted to question some of the students, every single one of them had the same line back to me, which was, we're not media trained. Please go talk to somebody at the front, the front tent who is media trained. But I talked to dozens of students who not only refused to talk to me, but said that same rehearsed line, which I thought was very suspicious. If you're out here taking over your campus in the name of Palestine and against Israel, how are you, like, why can't you talk to me directly? Aren't you passionate and knowledgeable about this issue enough to be supporting it? Or is somebody just telling you to stay here and not to talk to the media or a YouTuber or anybody who just has questions? The only question I ask is, why are you out here? And they wouldn't even answer that. They were too scared to. Uh, so very, very fishy stuff. And this whole movement to me just has a lot of red flags. But anyway, let me know what you guys thought of this clip in the comments. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you get notified when we post new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.